welcome to this new video for my channel, The Mental Traveler. I'm Carol Herrera and today I'm going to be talking about a high fantasy series called The Chronicles of Prydain. It was written by American author Lloyd Alexander after he was inspired by tales from Welsh mythology. One curious note is that I think Alexander was the one who came up with the term high fantasy to describe this subgenre of fantasy. The series consists of five books called The Book of Three, The Black Cauldron, The Castle of Lear, Terran Wanderer and The High King. They were published between 1964 to 1968 and in 1985 Disney loosely adapted the first two novels into an animated film called The Black Cauldron, which I shall also be reviewing. Since this pentalogy is aimed for children, the books are not very long. They're about 250 pages each. Anyways, before I begin, let me just say that this will be a spoiler-free video so you can sit back and enjoy. I never watched The Black Cauldron growing up, but last year I saw that Netflix had uploaded it and since I like fantasy, I decided to check it out. I thought it was nice, but it didn't impress me or anything and yet it aroused my curiosity enough to research if it was based on a book or something and yes, I was proof right. It was actually based on a series of five books and so I read the first pages of the first one, The Book of Three, and I liked it. I also read on Goodreads some very positive reviews about the series, which actually compares said at some points with Lord of the Rings and The Chronicles of Narnia. Since I love those stories, I decided that I should one day read The Chronicles of Prydain, and then months later I finally bought them and I read them, each one in a single day. And while I usually love spoilers, I didn't want to read what was gonna happen next. I hadn't seen it before in a movie, thus I was surprised with everything that was happening along the way. The protagonist of the Chronicles of Prydain is a young orphan teenager called Terran. When we first meet him, he lives at this farm with a famous wizard and his main duty is to take care of a very special pig called Henwen. It's for this reason that Terran is known as an assistant pig keeper. Throughout the series, we will follow Terran as he grows into manhood and goes off to have all of these adventures in the realm of Prydain, making many friends, fighting with many foes and learning some very important lessons along the way. The plot for all the five books would be the following. Peace in Prydain is threatened by this evil warlord called the Horny King, who is seeking for no other than Henwen, the pig that Terran is looking out for. Since he has always dreamed of becoming a hero, our protagonist leaves his home in an attempt to protect Henwen, but things won't turn out as smoothly as he expected. The main antagonist in this series is called Aran, the Death Lord, and among his evil doings he has in possession a magic cauldron that allows him to have armies composed of dead men. In an attempt to stop this unnatural threat, Terran and his friends set out to Aran's kingdom with the intent of stealing and destroying the cauldron. Will they succeed or will their fates take them on very different roads than the one they started on. One of Terran's best friends is a princess called Eloni from the House of Lear, and in the third books in the series they have to part ways. When Terran escorts her to her new home, a threat from their past reappears, endangering Eloni's safety. Terran will try anything he can do to protect her, but along the way he will meet unexpected people and stumble upon dangerous secrets from the past. In this book, Terran is really coming to his own, leaving his childhood behind and becoming a man on his own right. He starts on a quest to discover his origins, but ends up encountering all of these different situations and people that will change his perspective of things and impress on him the man he wants to become one day. This is the conclusion where all the roads meet and many long unanswered questions are revealed. It's full of adventures and battles as Terran and his friends fight to keep the Death Lord from taking hold of all Prydain. The Black Cauldron film. Disney's movie is a loose adaptation from the first two novels. It deals with the Black Cauldron. The antagonist is the one from the first book, not the second one. A lot of characters are erased and the journey Terran undergoes becomes more personal than epic. I give The Chronicles of Prydain a 5 out of 5 stars review. I really loved it as a whole series and each book individually. I thought they were wonderful, I can't praise them enough, they're funny, sweet, and as the story progresses it gets more serious and it has deeper meanings, and yet they never lose their touch of innocence. There's a beauty in their simplicity, because seeing as they're aimed for children, their writing style is not that difficult, and the themes are in a way those that inspire the young ones to do good when they grow up. And even though they don't provide really deep analysis into the characters' beings and their development, I think that the fact that I read this series as an adult allows me to recognize some subtleties of adulthood that the author wrote along the way. I was attracted from the start to the story of Terran, this assistant pig keeper, because it was evident that 
greatness awaited him and I wanted to see how he got there, what he learned along the way, what he discovered in himself. So yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed his journey. He starts out being this young, typical kid and grows up to be very wise. He's a likable protagonist. And then there are other characters that are really cool, for example, Gurgi, who reminds me a bit of Gollum. And I'm sure the villain from the first novel, I would have been scared of him had I watched the movie or the read the first book growing up. But the character that I love the most besides Terran was Elwoni, the princess. I can't really pronounce her name. It's Welsh. She was a very entertaining princess and a wonderful role model. She's not afraid to speak her mind and I admire her courage and goodness. Moving on as to the imaginary world Lord Alexander created. I really enjoyed stepping into it, discovering its boundaries, its limits, its magical creatures, its landscapes. I loved it all so much that I want to review each book individually, briefly, for example. I found that this one is a wonderful introduction to the series. Children will, I believe, easily relate to Terran and his longing for adventures. There are some comic elements and it marks the tradition of exploring the famous hero's journey that will be analyzed from different aspects in the course of the novel. This one kept on surprising me because I thought I knew what was coming and then that doesn't happen But I nonetheless enjoyed it very much as it went along I think the author does a nice job of portraying Terran's emotional and mental growth very well in this one, Terran is more of a teenager. We see glimpses of the man he'll one day become and he's wiser. He takes the lead of a rescue party and yet he's humble enough to admit when he makes wrong decisions. My favorite part though was seeing him realize that he's attracted to a girl. This one was quite a surprise. Because of its style, I was expecting all of these adventures and journeys Terran would undertake. And while that does happen to a degree, its approach is completely different to what I had envisioned. And I was glad that this happened because the final resorts were less of a cliche and very poetic. Also, in here, here, Terran is almost in the brink of manhood and I just couldn't help but fall for the man he is becoming. He learns so many important lessons here that I will certainly recall them for a very long time. In the conclusion of the series, the author had me in tears. It's bittersweet and a great book. Even if Terran sometimes seemed too good to be true and he made some choices I usually would question, I don't think I usually meet protagonists as pure as him in my readings. So yeah, my review of this volume is that it's a worthy finish for such a wonderful series. So all that is left for me to say is bravo to Lord Alexander and oh, how glad I am to have found your Chronicles of Prydain. As to the animated movie, while it's enjoyable and pretty to look at and I wish it had been more popular, I'm afraid that now that I've read the books, it fails to capture the scope of the plot, the characters and the land of Prydain. Still, it's the only adaptation out there so far. Before I finish this video, I want to say that the author, some years after he completed the series, went on to write a collection of short stories set in this wonderful fantasy world that he created. They're called The Foundling and Other Tales of Prydain. I'm not quite sure if this is where you can find the short stories called Cole and His White Peak or The Truthful Harp because I have yet to read them and review them but hopefully I shall remedy these soon in the future. Oh and also there are rumors that Disney is acquiring the rights to make a live adaptation of this series so I'm keeping my fingers crossed it happens but it's only if it's done right that they really capture the true essence of the book, it's innocence. Still wish though that they shot fantasy movies like back in the 80s with puppets because all of this CGI is just not my cup of tea personally. But yes, anyways, for the moment I believe this is all I have to say about the series by Lloyd Alexander. Thank you very much for watching my review of it. Please let me know if you liked it or not and what are your own thoughts on the Chronicles of Prydain because I would love to discuss them with you. In the description box below you can find a link to the Goodreads page for the whole series as well as a link to the, page, to the IMDb page for the Black Cauldron movie. Also, before I go, The Mental Traveler is on Instagram so it would be great if you could follow me. But yes, anyways, I am Carol Herrera, The Mental Traveler and I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. Take care and I'll be seeing you soon. Goodbye!